When Charles Osmus, a World War II veteran from Arvada, visits the Colorado Railroad Museum in Golden, a lifetime of memories comes racing back. He was a telegrapher with the Army's Railroad Battalion, stationed in Europe. It was a method of communication before telephone. Typing Morse code on equipment just like the display at the Railroad Museum, he would relay instructions to the train engineers who were taking food and weapons to the front lines. We handled all, all of the um, communications for the trains traveling up and down. When I want to send out to the other side to someone, I open it up like this and then I send my message in this manner. Dot dash is A. Dash dot 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 is B. Typing the codes was the easy part. More challenging? Using a loop on a stick to pass written messages to the engineers while the train was still moving. And even more dangerous? Dodging German tracer fire. When enemy pilots targeted the flammable ammunition, Osmus helped transport. Airplanes come over, shoot bullets at you uh, and your trains and try to ignite or cause an explosion of uh, anything that's in the cars or on the ground. And whenever a German planes come over, why, uh, we would go leave our stations in our offices and go to our bunkers underground. Not far from his rail yard in France, General George Patton and his troops closed in on the Germans, blasting their remaining strongholds. There was guys out there 24 hours a day in foxholes and, and other places, and we were crossing our fingers that we wouldn't be deactivated and called up to be infantrymen. They were the heroes, they really were. Osmus and his 7th Army traveled across the Rhine River and converged with Patton's troops. We moved up pretty close to the corridor where General Patton was moving through northern France with his uh, 3rd Army. As a result, he earned a plaque commemorating his role in the famed Battle of the Bolt. Osmus worked behind the volatile front lines, helping evacuate Patton's wounded soldiers arriving on hospital trains. When the war ended in 1945, Osmus stayed in Europe. His job now was moving the thousands of people displaced from the war back to their home countries. Everybody seemed to be in the wrong country when the war ended. He also helped transport German POWs. The railroad cars were built with their windows way up high, and uh, they would stick bottles out of the windows, and we would give them water. This is a mother's cross. One of the rare souvenirs he brought home is a cross, something the Nazis awarded women for having multiple children. When he sees that swastika, it's a chilling reminder of the realities of the war. It was something that happened that uh, the German people done, and uh, the Nazis, in order to increase their population. His buddies from the military railway service are a tight-knit group. For more than 20 years, Osmus has been part of a yearly reunion with as many as 500 veterans in locations all over the country. Sadly, he says, they don't have them anymore because there aren't many veterans left. Those trips were some of the best times of his life. Never missed, all, all of the reunions were just so enjoyable. Like most modest World War II veterans, he's proud of his service, but downplays his job as a soldier. We were just doing our thing. It was something that had to be done, and there were so many of us, and everybody had done their job. He's 86 years old now, living in Arvada, where he and his wife raised five children. A half century now separates him from the war. His army jacket doesn't fit like it used to, but looking back, he has fond memories of typing Morse code, working on the railroad, making lasting friendships, 
and serving his country.